You're watching New Car Spin. I'm your host, Brian, and with me is Kurt from McLaren. How are you doing, Kurt? I'm doing well, man. All right. So we have in front of us the, or behind us, <laughs> beside us, the Artura. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So as far as I know, this is brand new. Yep. And it is the hybrid McLaren, the first hybrid, right? Second hybrid. Sec oh, the P1. Yeah, okay. yeah. That's but key. Okay, but it's mm -hmm. it, this is supposed to be sort of the, where does it fit in the model lineup? Um, I will back up just a little bit. Actually, the biggest thing about this car being brand new is that it is the first brand new from the ground up car since the 12C. Oh, when okay. you look from 12C becoming 650, 570, 720, uh, even the P1, yep. as extreme as it was at the time, was all kind of built on that same platform, that same framework. And this is completely different from the ground up. So we don't really, I do want to make sure it's not really a 570 replacement. It's not that direct in the lineage. Okay. I will always compare this car to 570 and 720. Okay. Because those are very different performance levels, but it's still the same generation. This is okay. going to be a new generation and really the new platform for basically all the McLarens that are yet to come. Forward. Okay. Yep. So this is a glimpse into the future. Exactly. Okay. Yep. Now. I can get into a lot of questions and everything, but yeah. I figure I'll just let you do a few of the words <laughs> and then we'll yeah. just hop in it and go down the street. Yeah. Um, and real ahead. quick though, we're at Dallas McLaren. Correct. Yep. Okay. So this is where we're at. This is where we're showing the car. I'm an automotive journalist. I don't get paid for this, <laughs> but I do get the chance to hop in and, and drive one of these. It's my first McLaren experience, by Ooh, the way. So I'm let's go. Good to know. Okay. Yeah. So that actually helps a lot with what we're going to go through in the car. That's fine. Okay. Um, overall, the biggest thing, other than being brand new from the ground up, I really like to stress this, that this is a hybrid for the sake of performance. And I really believe that with all the changes, with whatever differences we've added, the and net result is no compromise. Mm -hmm. People say, but it's a V6. This V6 is smaller, lighter, and more powerful than the outgoing 3.8 liter V8. Mm -hmm. So even if all we did was put the V6 in instead of the V8, we'd have a higher performance car. Yep. And then we do have the electric capacity, but the focus of it is entirely the combined performance of both powertrains. Okay. So our pure electric range, not that high. Our pure electric performance, not that fast, because that's just the icing on the cake. The point is, what do they both do together? Okay. And even though it's a plug-in, you don't have to plug it in. It'll automatically generate while driving. And if you lose the range and the gauge, if yeah. you see that electric range on the gauge go all the way down, it's flat, it's empty, it's dead, all that pertains to is the pure electric range. You still yeah. have full performance capacity at all times. So I did want to mention this because yeah. it just it came to my mind. So obviously this is your future. And the, the interesting thing though is like in today's day and age, it's mm -hmm. like the Rolex age. You can't buy a Rolex unless you've got a Rolex or mm. you've purchased five watches from that same person. Right. And so it's the same thing with Porsche Turbo S. You want one, you have to have a few Porsches. If you want a Ferrari, hey, start with the Roma. And yeah. so I don't think you're going there with this because I don't think McLaren sells their cars like that. No. But the one thing that sticks in my mind, mm -hmm. I, kn I know that it's a hybrid. Yeah. The car that everybody walked by for the last couple of years, they just keep walking by it, is the Acura NSX. Yes. It was way ahead of its time, mm -hmm. right? We'll admit mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. V6 hybrid. And, and now, a lot of people are starting to do it. Ferrari, McLaren, mm -hmm. right? But the NSX is dying. I'll do you one better. Yeah. The, the uh, BMW i8. Well, that's a three cylinder. It was, it was. Yeah. So, but, but they were the first ones to build anything that looked like a supercar in that package, but they never developed it. They never yeah. used it, they never improved it. And for years I was saying, the i8 should be by now at least what the NSX is. Right. Um, and now the NSX, certainly it is, I think it has been overlooked. I've driven that car. It's a great car. It's a good performance car. Yeah. Um, there were a few things that I heard from people who chose a McLaren instead, mm -hmm. or from people who you know spent time with me in the NSX and still decided against it. Yep. There's more to it. There's some in the build quality. There's the fact that the interior is plastic. Mm -hmm. And I genuinely think- It's a Honda. It's a Honda. And I genuinely think that if that interior, if they had spent more time. This is my terrible math, okay? I, yeah. I can't back any of this up. But I think that if they spent 10 to 20 grand more on the interior in production, they would have sold a lot more of the cars. I, I think that turned a lot of people off. I agree. And yeah, to be fair, they paved the way a bit. We had the P1, yeah. which was insane. It was extreme. Everyone respected it. The NSX yeah. had to earn it. Yeah. It had, it was, it was kind of counter to its own lineage though as well. Yep. 
And so I think a lot of it was just the optics. Yeah. But they did prepare a lot of people to receive a car like this. So I'll accept that. Now that you can't get an NSX, you can get... <laughs> okay. I Okay. Yeah. I don't remember the name of this car. I always forget it. Okay. It's, it starts with an A, right? Okay. This car, this here. What is this? Oh, this one right now. What is it? The Artura. Artura. Yeah. So I looked that name up. <laughs> and it's, it's the, the funny thing is if you look up Artura, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's like baby names for girls. And it means noble, right? So <sighs> the expectations mm. here are pretty high, I'm just going to say. But I do have to say that if you're if you're looking for an NSX, uh -huh. you can't buy a new one. So right. this is your this is your next solution. This yeah. is if you're if you're buying that. Yep. Now I personally have owned a Volvo a T8, mm. which is the two engine hybrid system and it's right. a plug-in. So I know that that's the future over just having a standard EV. Right. So I'm pretty excited to see the advantages of what the McLaren can do because yeah. obviously a plug-in hybrid gets you ability to plug into or park in the EV parking spots. Yes. And you can take advantage of all that in the city. So yep. what I really want to do is get behind the wheel and, and let's see what it can do. The only thing I do have to touch on is because you looked up Artura and you found baby names. Um, <laughs> the more official line from McLaren is that it's actually a portmanteau of the word art and future. Okay. And I've also heard some other very interesting uh, definitions, including, I think, something like Slavic for bear. I don't know. Okay. But we're sticking with art and future, because yeah. it's kind of style and performance and technology. We'll go with that. Okay. And then we'll jump right in. Okay, let's do that. Yep, yep. Okay. Yep, we're good. This is the one? Yeah, you're driving, right? Uh, yeah, I'm driving. Yep, you're driving. We're in, we're in the, the US, so I'm gonna go on this side. <laughs> nice. Okay, so how do you get in one of these? How do I get in? How do I get in one of these? <laughs> well, your seat is already also quite a bit forward, so I didn't help you much with that. Oh, okay. But it's more fun this way. It it's is way fun. more fun. I don't want to make it too easy. It's Otherwise, a with a little bit of practice, you oh, can there we make go. it a little better. But your seat adjustments now are on your outboard. Oh, all yeah, the way yeah. to the left. They used to be tucked more. Oh, that's right. This is your first McLaren experience. First. Yeah. So I'm a little... Uh, I would I wouldn't say nervous or confused. I'm just I want to I want to just yeah I want to see and feel everything. So my first impression right now is it fits like a glove. Totally fits like a glove. I love the doors. Actually, it's much easier to get in and out of than the i8. Yes, so. <laughs> because a carbon co carbon fiber cockpit has a wide sill. The i8 has a very wide sill. Yeah. Um, but that's because over. they only made really two carbon fiber cockpits in their entire industry, mm -hmm. where that has been a, every single car we make. So, the, yeah, we're going to have a better a better entrance. So let me get the camera in here. Uh -huh. I think we'll hand it off to you, Kurt. All right. And so we'll show the interior a little bit. If you just hold it, let's go like this. Uh -huh. Pull this trigger twice, it'll Ooh. reset. Ooh. There we go. If you, right. There's a trigger behind it, so if you hold it like a like a pistol. I'm learning everybody. You're in Texas, so <laughs> just don't hold that trigger because what it'll do is it'll it'll uh, okay. fix it on whatever you're looking at. So if we pan down here, mm -hmm. this I love this. It, it's kind of like a smartwatch, basically. Yeah. But then, oh, are these yours? Those are my McLaren orange sunglasses. <laughs> <Hello>. <laughs> They're mine now. Hello. <laughs> Very simple, very clean. There's not a lot of lines. Everything is just kind of built in and smooth. Yeah, yeah. So pull the door down. Yep. yep. Oh, that's very easy to do. Yeah, it's not too heavy. And it was a soft close, I noticed. Yeah, that helps. There we go. Okay. So first things first, good for impress on the brake. Good for impress on, on the start button. Get my foot in there. It's kind of a narrow foot box. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. Let me just show that for a second and grab this from you. I'm wearing those Yeezys. <laughs> so not much of a foot rest or a dead pedal as they call it, but foot's on the brake. Okay. And then press start. Yep, good for impress on the brake. It's just a little kind of a good press and, and hold on both. Oh. Now, you did just start. I'm gonna turn this fan down. Okay. Okay. Cranking the AC here in Dallas, but you did start <laughs> it up in electric mode. Yeah, I noticed it yep. didn't make any noise. And this is actually something, it's really actually won us over because we understand how much I just keep saying, it's just icing on the cake, it's not the point, it's not the purpose. However, to be able to cruise around in tight spaces in pure electric, it's so smooth, it's so quiet. Uh, when we maneuver a car like indoors, 
or just coming in at night, the last couple blocks before you get home and it's silent, mm -hmm. is really nice. I call that mistress mode. <laughs> I don't because <laughs> I'm on camera. Oh, uh, right. So, <laughs> right. <laughs> good for you. <laughs> I'm not married, so uh, I'm, I'm free and clear of that. I'm gonna call that uh, silent mode, and we'll just go with that. So it starts off, I notice it says comfort. Yep. Okay, couple neutral. Few, yeah, a couple of things about that. Um, I'll show this first. If you want to adjust the steering column, there's a little button, there's a short nub halfway up the steering. Got yep. it. Okay. When that moves, oh. the steering wheel and the binnacle move with yep. it, because why not? You maintain the best possible view of your gauges yeah. with when it moves with the steering wheel. That's a that's a thing too that I always do is I always line it up to mm -hmm. the bottom, mm -hmm. but now it's all it's already fixed, so that's cool. And your dynamic controls are gonna be right here. So with the, your hands never even have to leave the wheel, and you can adjust powertrain basically oh, yeah. more aggressive or less aggressive. Let's try that. Yep, and that'll take oh, yeah. it up. Okay. And one more notch will put the gas engine on. Ah. Yeah. Okay. So you don't even have to do it before you start it. You can start it and then hit that button Correct. twice. Yep. And then you've got your engine. And so you, you can. And if you want the engine on immediately, then as soon as you start it, you just tap it up. Yeah. But otherwise, okay. you always start quietly. Okay. One more thing I'll show you while you're here too is if you look look above your left knee, right there on the dashboard is a row of buttons. Yep. The one on the far left is the icon of the car and the arrow. If you press that, it'll lift up the nose. Okay. And that just gives us extra clearance yep. leaving this parking lot and some of the small streets over there. Yep, I see the icon here too. Otherwise, when you put it in drive, we are ready to go. Okay, so drive is down here. Yep. Push down. We're in first. Yep, got it. And then the parking brake lever is again above your left knee. It's a small lever. Just a light lift. Oh, yeah. Press it in. Oh, press. Okay. Yep, there you go. Now, is this a dual clutch? Yes, every, every McLaren is a true dual clutch. Uh, it makes a really big difference. Once we have time to drive, I highly encourage people to play with this transmission. Um, it's a slightly higher RPM than before. It's up to 8,500, Okay. but we also added the gear. So with one more full gear and a higher red line and the electric torque infill, you never hunt for gears. The car is always ready to respond to whatever position you put it in. All right, this is the trick. Oh, there it is. I think that's it. The mirror. That's mirrors. Yep. Okay, good. Because I'm like definitely thinking, how do I do that? Right there. Yep. You're on the left okay. mirror. You can toggle from there. Yeah. Just it's like aiming down towards the curb. So I just want to make sure I got what I need. Okay. Okay. Like a left or a right? And you said, oh well, I can show you where we usually go, where you can do your drive, whatever's easiest for you. Oh, I'll do. I'll do my drive. Okay. I'll do it left. That'll be that'll be less talking for me anyway. So. Oh, good. Okay. Oh man, this is crazy. Welcome to Dallas. <laughs> McLaren Club over here. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's do something. Can, can you see what that camera is aiming yep. at? Okay. Just want to make sure we're yep, good. I got it this far back so I can get you in there. Rear wheel drive? Rear wheel drive only, yep. Nose little, auto lowering? Yeah, the noise you just heard is because we lifted the nose and then once you're above 39, it puts itself back down. Okay. I'm just trying to get used to the uh, dynamics here. Yeah. Get that up a little bit on the steering wheel. Yeah. Okay. And then the air. Let's change the more. fan. There we go. We've got little lav mics on, so we should be okay. should be safe with most of the noise. Now, this I'm used to like looking around and seeing a map immediately and stuff like that. But <laughs> on the screen, I'm sure there's uh, oh, there we go. Nav. Mm -hmm. And really, look, this system is better than it has been. We're always improving that. Most companies are always improving their own infotainment. But the biggest thing is that it now has CarPlay. Yeah. So just yeah. you just cut out the middleman and you use your phone. Um, I need to get wow, this. That's weird. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Texas, everybody. Ta yeah, for sure, for sure. So being that it's a hybrid, mm -hmm. the air conditioning still runs. Mm -hmm. Everything's because it's it's not just a like a 
dainty hybrid. It's got a pretty good power battery. Yeah, pack and, and the HVAC that. system is run by its own generator system. So, so you pump. never like, yeah. a, like a like a refrigerator would yep. be. Okay. You're not gonna miss out on that. Okay. And I'm a pretty big guy, so I feel like I fit in here quite well. I'm not squeezing in. With McLarens, typically, once you're in, you have the space. There is the ingress, there is the egress, which sometimes take a little work, but right. once you're in, yeah, it usually works quite well. This road is a typical Dallas road, too. It's just full of surprises, so we're, we're, we're able to uh, navigate through it. It feels really... The steering feels... I don't want to say heavy, but it feels really precise. Mm -hmm. And that's for no one number one reason. It's real steering. It is hydraulic linkage. Oh, it is electronic. Wow. It is okay. power assist. But there is physical linkage between the wheel in your hands and the wheels on the road. That's noticeable. And almost everybody has gone away from that. And that's something McLaren just has no plans to do with it. The steering has to be fine tuned. Yep. It has to be, you know, high quality engineering, but if you you either have that feel or you don't. You're either connected to the wheels or you're not. Or you're it's not. a completely different situation. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna head to the toll road, uh, Dallas North Tollway South. Mm -hmm. Get on that, head down, take the next exit, get off. I don't want this video to be too long, but we certainly don't edit the videos. <laughs> and that's just how I roll, I'm keeping it real, so. Uh, no problem. It's always hard to just come up with stuff to talk about, but I, I think that... <laughs> okay, so what are all the noises I'm hearing in this thing, too? Like, just... It, like, the little bings and the bongs, like... Yeah, so. there would be a few. One you heard was the nose auto-lowering. Okay. Um, it is also set to let you know at this point, and you can mess with it in the settings, but it's designed right now to let you know when you surpass the speed limit. Okay. Which, for these drives, I'm happy to have those settings on. Um, yeah. I want people to really play with the car and get to know it, but it's also better just to know everything that's going on. Well, yeah, I have a, I'm on a 90-day probation. I probably shouldn't say that to everybody, but I'm on a 90-day probation. Why am I learning this now? <laughs> <laughs> well, he so that wasn't my camera guy. That was actually my parole officer. So, Well, that's really outside my jurisdiction then, but... Um, <laughs> no, no, we're good. So, no, so things to talk about though I think that there are really good questions even about that technology you know Apple CarPlay is one example um, the lane departure warnings and the speed limits and the oh, adaptive cruise control yep. that stuff is also the supercars were very late adopters of that because they're just not the priority no oh, right. And, right and I know that most people will still drive this car myself included with those systems turned off but at the same time it starts to become a ridiculous oversight not to just include them when they're now so easy and affordable. Plus, you know what? I do love the ride quality. Mm -hmm. I don't want to say it's mm -hmm. an air suspension, but mm -hmm. I feel very connected and it, and it dampens just right. The rebound is controlled. Like everything about it feels so precise. And I don't think it, <laughs> there's that crazy <laughs> thing again. I don't think it needs to be all, you know, a, a sports car doesn't need to be rough to be a sports car. It just needs to be connected. And my biggest question, because I have you here, yeah. it's about all the technical stuff, right? Yep. So I don't want to get into the battery and the horsepower and all that. What I want to do is say, when you cold start a car, especially a high performance car, it needs to warm up. You got to let the fluids get going. It needs to be in a certain state before you can really start opening it up. Yeah. And this is a hybrid. So my immediate like question is, what does McLaren do, or is there a process or some kind of like configuration for it to get to temperature before you really, you know, unknowingly yeah. do something? No, like and that. I would do, I mean, I would just do the same thing, right? You start in the silent electric mode, mm -hmm. and, um, but you can start it that way. You can double tap the dynamic controls immediately okay. and turn on the internal combustion engine and let it sit and warm up for a while. Or if you're already out driving, like we have been, and we go from electric mode into sport or track to turn the engine on, you just take it easy for a little bit. Okay. Like it's really, it's good to be aware of it. And surprisingly, you're one of the first people to ever ask me that question. But it really is just, that's just kind of your own diligence. So there, there isn't like really a specific way or like a super heat mode or anything like that that, that will 
dynamically in, um, control the the heat management. Or no, anything. nothing for you to activate. Okay, here we go. Getting on the toll road. Okay. <laughs> okay. It's definitely. It has some character there. <laughs> so, tell me what's happening with this electric motor. It's it's definitely. To, uh, kicking in. Let's try a downshift here. Yep. Downshift. And, and I, when you downshift, you do whatever you're comfortable with, but yeah. remember the 8,500 RPM red line. And that means you're probably going to downshift more than you would expect to. So I'm wait. encouraging you to play with it. I'm still just waiting for an opening yeah. here. I want this but when it's time. Yeah. We're going to buy some space. So, 48 miles an hour. <laughs> the electric motor is boosting. Boosting, right. So it is it is a twin turbo and a hybrid. Are we good? Okay. Alright, we fixed it. So it does it automatically shift when you're in this track mode or do you have to use the paddle? It will still shift itself, but you can also still use the paddle shifters whenever you want. So I'm just getting used to the dynamics of it. I feel like I'm in total control. I feel like this track mode definitely t takes the steering up to a whole new level. And that's a big key with, when you're talking about the dynamic controls on these cars, McLarens have an incredible bandwidth. And by that I just mean, I, my argument really is that there's nothing that will compete with them on the track that is also as easy and comfortable to take to a strip mall. Right. And even within that, when you go from uh, comfort mode to track mode, the characteristics of the car won't change that much, but you've greatly increased the capacity. And what it's still waiting for, though, is your driving input. So if you're really aggressive in comfort mode in this car, you'll hit 83 before you hit third. Okay. But if you're in track mode and you are cruising, you'll be in seventh gear at 45. Wow. So it's always ready. You can maximize what it's capable of. Okay. But even within that, it's always waiting for what you are currently asking it to do. I do know that it seems like track mode must have turned down the AC a little bit. <laughs> it definitely got a little warm in here. But um, to change the manual or to change the mode yep. again, I would just go down on here. Okay. Exactly. So that's good. I'll just take my hands and put them all over the place and do a bunch of you can keep your funky, hands on the wheel. Funky things, yeah. You can keep your hands on the wheel the whole time you're changing dynamic modes. And a fun little note about that too is most people don't even know this that you have your paddle shifters. Yep. But in the McLaren, they're on a rocker pedal. I noticed this one moved and that one moved. So oh. you can shift up or down with either paddle. And that's just in case you know if you're taking a hard turn and you have much better access to one paddle than the other, you, you can shift either way with it, push or pull. That might confuse me a little bit because <laughs> I'm a little bit old school. That's, you know, I'm that's Gen next X, level. You, know? you never have to, but you always could. Wait, am I Gen X? No. <laughs> so we got we to gotta do the math on that real quick. No, I'm 79, so that's definitely grew up in the 80s. Yeah, I think that's about right, Gen X. I'm mm -hmm. not a millennial, and I'm not Gen Z, so, and I'm not a boomer. We're going to wait. Zero to 60 in three seconds, something like that? Yeah, zero to 60 in three. Um, the biggest thing is McLarens are incredibly quick. They're very fast off the line. You still see them get drag raced on the internet all the time. Yeah. They're never designed for that. That is not the priority because okay. you don't race zero to 60 unless you do a Le Mans start and then that's just once. No, it's really for just getting on the freeway. <laughs> it is for getting on the freeway, but even then that's a rolling start. And that's why when you see a McLaren with a rolling start, they yeah. smoke it. If you take it from quarter mile to a half mile, they'll mm. always win. But that's because real racing, mm. which is what the car is actually designed for, 
is not between zero to 60 and it's not at your top speed. Okay. Racing is usually, almost always, between 60 and 160. And that's what the cars are really built for. They are, yeah. They're, they're, <laughs> this can do 206, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely not for tooling around. You definitely need to use it. We're, we're trying as much as we can around here. What this, I do, this is also good to see, like how, how easy it is to use just for normal car stuff. Well, it's got great visibility. I'm just looking around. It's like everything, it, my glasses are actually inhibiting the... <laughs> Keep them on though. <laughs> Working on it. <laughs> Some hard braking, they'll probably just fly off. But what we're gonna do is we'll go down to, so we're by the Love Field Airport. So it's basically Southwest Airport. Okay. We're gonna end up on, uh, whatever that street is, Lemon. Yep. And we're going to end up all the way back to uh, the dealership. But I definitely think that this this car needs to really be driven to be appreciated. And if, if you're used to the V8s, I mean, not that I've driven a V8 McLaren or any other McLaren, but I just think as far as a sports car, I think the advantage here is that, oh, that's a lane keeping, okay. That little chirp sound like almost like a old Clifford car alarm. <laughs> I think if you're not wanting to wait for a certain vehicle to, to hit the market or to be available at a dealer, the the McLaren option makes a lot of sense, especially because the plug-in hybrid aspect makes it an actual electric vehicle by by legal terms, and by doing that means you get you should get the uh, federal tax incentive but that's all that's the size of that incentive is always dependent on the size of the of the battery right mm -hmm. yeah and it, for th I'm just again saying that for that purpose it won't be the most effective correct just, I mean no one cares about a couple grand on a on a large purchase like this but that's not bad on on the uh, performance side of it yeah to not have to sit here like we are right now, right? Of course, I won't do it now. <laughs> but you're not you're not sitting here idling away in a V8, just mm -hmm. burning fuel, just burning, 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 which you do a lot. There we go, it shut yeah. off. So you're not just sitting here pissing it away, in my in my perspective, right. in a V8. It shuts off, and it, you're preserving that all of that juicy, delicious fuel, right? <laughs> so that you can go ahead and just like go ripping around and. I'm really interested in seeing, like, is there an EV-only mode up to a certain speed? Yeah. Okay. If you're an electric, you do have a limited range. Um, the EPA is super strict. Yeah. So where we have guys driving their Artura to the headquarters and back every day in the UK, and it's a 20-mile drive, mm -hmm. and they have no problem, the EPA has now listed it, I think, closer to 11. Okay. Just because their standards are so strict, even when real world experience is telling us differently. Um, and you can only do about 90 miles an hour in pure electric. Only 90? Yep. Yeah. So again, it's not, but you think about, if you think about what a pure EV car can do. Right. They're so fast in electric. Yeah. They're incredibly high performance in electric because that's all they have. Right. Where for us, what we're doing right now is just the icing on the cake. But the, that's the that's what I like about this this plug-in hybrid aspect to it. My Volvo uh, S60 T8 had that. Like you could be in both modes. You couldn't do 90. You could probably do about 70 on the freeway before the motor kicked in. Mm -hmm. But you basically have this full ability to have two different cars without without having to have two cars. Yeah. So you know if you felt like ah, I want to be in quiet, I want to be in like this is pretty quiet. I mean obviously I like hearing the electric hum. But some cars are quieter than others. I just drove that Genesis GV60. It was completely silent. But it, but there's no gas engine, mm -hmm. right? right? Here, let's see what it's like passing. Okay, it's like a typical EV then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's why I say, like, the net result of this car, mm -hmm. as significantly different as it is from other most of the McLarens, is that the net result is still no compromise. You have all the performance. You have the additional electric power. You do have another electric mode that'll come in handy sometimes. But you're also obviously not giving up the <laughs> the fun performance side of things. I don't know if you noticed that we hit triple digits. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, okay, good, just check. We did. It. It 
was wide open. <laughs> so, as far as the McLaren brand, I mean, I'm not familiar with the types of people that buy McLarens or whatnot, but I, I'd assume that they're definitely into driving sports cars and not just like looking like they are uh, like the Porsche GT3 driver, right? It's just like they, they spend their time tooling around. I think I don't really see McLarens on the street. Is it because they're all at the track? No, and I mean I don't want to I don't want to paint anybody with too broad a brush because I know some in, I do. incredibly enthusiastic Porsche drivers for sure. Yeah. Um, but part of it is just part of it is just being a much newer brand and okay. more of a niche brand and being a lower production number. That yes, there will be brands that will always be known just for the prestige, right? They buy that because they've had that poster on their wall since they were a kid, and they want to say, "I own this car." Mm -hmm. They just want to say they own it. Where, because McLaren's been smaller, newer, and more rare, it, it really has been more of the, um, you know, the, the real enthusiast um, or the connoisseur up mm -hmm. until now. And we also really promote that, that, that car lifestyle. We want people to drive. If you own this car and it's your first real supercar yeah. and you haven't had any on-track training, I would say go get it done. Yeah. It doesn't have to be your new thing, but you know, go spend a few days, learn more about the car, learn how to how to get the most out of yourself and the car, and really enjoy it. And yeah, you know what? Let's say just in the well, we're in Texas. I was going to say the summer months because I'm from Michigan, but let's just say <laughs> That's every time. Right. So let's say every few months. Every few months, you go out to the track and just really use the car. That is a much more desirable lifestyle for a McLaren owner from the brand like we want to promote that so I do I do say that it's a nice car to drive I do like that it's a hybrid and that I can drive it in the city and it's it's just a very capable car that way but I think that from the experience of just how we were up there <laughs> with the uh, explosion of speed which had to be done yeah you, you know, know, some cars you're doing like 90 and you're like, oh, I didn't know I was going so fast. I, I have to say, and this is not a bad thing, when we were doing whatever that speed was, it felt like it. Mm. And and that's rare because some cars it feels a lot faster than it should be. Mm -hmm. And other cars you don't even notice. And I think this is just dead in the middle. It's like that was definitely in the trips. But it's the same thing with the way it accelerates there it's not a full linear acceleration that you could expect in a in an ev um and i would say like if you've driven the volvo hybrid it kind of does the same thing it has like this surge of electric and then the engine but it's also supercharged in that one so you feel more of a a, a punch it's not as fast as this it's about a second slower uh a second and a half slower but you feel what i like to convey is we can talk about numbers all day long, it doesn't mean anything, but it's about what that feeling is. And in this one, it definitely rewards you at the top end. Mm -hmm. You know, when you don't lift off, if you keep your foot in it and you give it all of it, and uh, you know, you don't back down, you definitely get rewarded for that. It, it's something to me I, I really appreciate in a car because there are other sports cars out there where it's like right off the line and then it just, it's, it's even. Mm -hmm. And this this is very different. This is a very cool experience. I want to appreciate the opportunity to drive it. Let me show you guys the key real quick. This is the key. Fits in the pocket. You have one cup holder. Make two of them here. This, this one is actually better. Oh yeah, okay. That one, you know, that's a little harder to get to, but. Yeah, just overall then it's it's like, daily drivable you don't have to like really freak out about about where you're going to go with it because we have the lifting nose is that an option or is that standard standard do you know what level what speed it lowers at 39 39 okay so you can definitely prepare way in advance of course now i can't see <laughs> welcome to texas land of the big trucks to block your view Pulling this driveway? Yeah, pulling here, pulling up around back again. Okay. But. Oh yeah. 
Oh, and then there's the Supra, the Toyota Supra. That's definitely... Uh, so, that, you know, I love the Supra because it's, no, number one, it's like 55000 pretty much, like, all in for the six-cylinder. Obviously, now you can get a manual, but um, the footprint on it is really small. And what I've been saying is that's, you know, the future, they're going to have all these EVs and everything, and it's going to be really hard to find a car that small, that fast, so much potent potency, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so the only option to that would be something like this. Uh, which is why I mentioned the Supra because these cars aren't that big. Right. This is it's not a pig at all. Um, which, I, which way should I go here? Just wherever you're wherever you're comfortable with. I'll just slide in between these two spots. Let me open fine. the door. Well, actually, the doors don't flip up. But man, I, it's been a while since I've driven a car with hydraulic steering. <laughs> all right, so here we go. We just hit off. Or yep. We... If you just hit stop, it'll actually put the car into neutral and engage the parking brake. There we go. <sighs> Thank you very much, Kurt. You got it, man. Let me uh it's all yours. This. Let's open the door here. How do we do that? Lift up on the big lever right inside here. And then it's a push out. It's really more oh, the yeah, angle yeah. than the effort. Okay. You want your shades here? I'll leave them in there for now. Okay. And I need to make sure I think that we are ready to go for the next one here. Okay. P0 Corsa, uh, carbon ceramic brakes. I guess you can't pop the hood on it. <laughs> no. Well, the bonnet, but that's your storage. Yeah. Let me just back up and just show this thing. Wow. Cool. I think we're done here. Cool, cool. Thank you very much. Absolutely, man.